from me about the radio. Like I'd miss something. Well, what are these islands you told us about? It's simple dead reckoning. Guys, please. It's dead reckoning. So I reckon we're dead out here. Kicking it off at number five, we have eye contact. You may not realize it, but eye contact is an incredibly powerful force and it's connected with humanity's earliest survival patterns. As we evolved, children who could attract eye contact from adults had the best chance of being fed and cared for. Today, newborn babies will instinctively lock eye contact with their caregivers, which has had a powerful impact in the adult mind. A huge part of this has to do with the whites of our eyes. Compared to the other 220 non-human primates, we are the only species that has evolved a large white area of the eye. Chimpanzees can easily be staring at one thing while their head is pointed in the complete opposite direction, and we'd have no idea because we're attuned to follow their eyes movement. For humans, eye contact was vital in our early development and gave us an almost instant understanding of each other's intentions without ever speaking a word. However, this fact can be easily manipulated by predators. In the wild, if you lock eye contact with a bear or a silverback gorilla, you're pretty much mince me. Direct eye contact is seen as a challenge to the rest of the animal kingdom, but it's almost instinctively done by humans. So, the next time you're at a zoo, make sure to keep your head down and leave the staring contest for another time. Which leads us to our next point, number four, fight or flight. Under cases of extreme stress, a response is triggered in the human body called fight or flight. It involves some pretty complicated hormonal shifts in the body, but the basic signs are an increase in heart rate, tunnel vision, dry mouth, and dilated pupils. The body needs to survive, and in most cases, remove itself from danger in whatever way it can. But when the body can't run, some pretty insane things can happen. In 2003, Aaron Ralston went hiking in the Utah canyons. It was all going great until Aaron slipped near a ravine and a boulder became dislodged, trapping him next to the wall of a deep, narrow canyon. His right arm was pinned between the boulder and the rock. Fight or flight kicked in and for Aaron, the only response left was to fight. Over a period of 127 hours, Aaron realized that the only action left was to cut his own arm off. He used his body weight to bend his own arm until the boulder snapped his forearm and then he began soaring through the bone. Aaron's instincts are for a reason. We can't breathe down there. Also, Krakens. The terrifying thing is, we're hardwired to have what is known as the instinctive drowning response. When a person finds themselves on the cusp of drowning, they enter an instinctive state of preservation. Movement becomes impossible, the person bobbing listlessly with their mouth level to the water. It's not like in the movies, the legs don't kick and the arms don't flail. The response is so undramatic that people often drown in busy bodies of water without even being noticed by other the swimmers or lifeguards then and even it happens the bond between mother and child is something hardwired an ancient instinct that has kept us alive for thousands of years in 2014 chelsea camp was pet sitting for a friend when their dog went into a rage and attacked chelsea's daughter well chelsea fought back with her fists and her teeth at one point, Chelsea even bit the dog's damn ear off. Her daughter survived. In 2000, a 40-year-old mother of seven became the first woman in medical history to give herself a C-section. In an isolated cabin with no help for miles, Inez Ramirez Perez was driven by pure desperation to save her unborn child. She cut into her own abdomen with a six inch blade and safely birthed her baby. You go, Mrs. Perez. A mother's instinct is something that you really, really, really don't want to cross. Kicking off at number five, poisonous predators. <laughs> Since the dawn of time, our species has been afraid of snakes. And for good reason, really. Indiana Jones was onto something after all. Thanks to evolution, we know that ancient humans were tree-dwelling mammals, and our species quickly learned that those very same trees were shared with some pretty terrifying serpents. And we quickly learned that the importance of telling the difference between a tree branch and a snake tail was literally a matter of life and death. Because of this, our eyes gradually evolved to see colors much more vividly, down to the fact that the most opportunistic 
genetic of our ancestral mammal ancestors would be better enabled to avoid the tree sharing snakes and not end up well dead. Well in a 2011 Japanese study they proved that humans are extremely sensitive to biologically threatening stimuli and researchers found that children were intrinsically rapid at detecting pictures of snakes hidden in flowers. It's not just snakes though because spiders also factor into this portion of our brain power and it is widely considered that arachnophobia is so much more prevalent in women due to the fact that during our hunter gatherer days if a woman were bit by a spider her offspring would likely die without her. Coming in at number 4, public speaking. Right, so when Rigby got his samples back from the laboratory, he made a startling discovery. <laughs> And perhaps Ross wouldn't have been laughed at if everyone knew that deep down he was just acting on an instinctual fear. Nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding, that scene is hilarious. Of course they'd still laugh at him, but the fear of public speaking isn't just reserved for nervous fictional characters because it's a universal fear felt by people across the planet. Have you ever been in a situation where you've got to give a presentation, but the night before you just can't seem to get any sleep? The next day you've got butterflies in your stomach and you're drenched in sweat. Well. The answer is that the root of this fear is actually built into our DNA. The fear of public speaking actually comes from our amygdala, the part of our brain that regulates emotion, which is then hypersensationalized by the reactions of each and every face in an audience, subconsciously picking them apart to see which, if any people, pose a genuine threat to our survival. Oftentimes this results in a crippling stage fright where some people, when faced with the terrifying reality of public speaking, simply just stare blankly into the crowd. The continued perception of this threat overloads their instinctual brain and it results in a primitive level staring contest, much like when a deer is literally caught in the headlights. Swinging in next at number 3, The Dark. Have you ever been lying in bed in complete darkness at an unholy hour just wondering why the hell you can't get off to sleep? Is it because enemies are nearby? cannot save your progress? Well, kind of, but there's actually a little bit more to it. Fear of the Dark, while also being an incredible Iron Maiden track, is actually one of the most intrinsic instincts that humanity possesses. Nearly all children and some adults maintain a completely founded physiological trauma of the things that go bump in the night. Why? Because, well, the grinding anxiety that a Fear of the Dark generates acts as a check and limiting mechanism against reckless behaviour that would have otherwise ended up with our ancestors just roaming out into the Serengeti and getting eaten by a big bad scary predator. See, here's the thing, because for a large portion of humanity's early days we weren't exactly the tip tip top apex predators that we are today. We had to earn it by capitalising on our evolutionary advantages, but back in the day our ancestors quickly learned that many predators preferred the cover of darkness to hunt, and in that we developed a shared, clearly signposted consciousness that said stay out of the dark because that's where all the crazy monsters that will eat us are. So the next time someone laughs at you for being scared of the dark, tell them that you've got your ancestors to thank because they were the smart ones. Next up at number 2, Heights. Oh Hans Gruber, you sorely misguided man. As my editor Dylan pointed out, Alan Rickman actually had his own massive fear of heights and when filming that scene, the crew lied to him about the timing of his harness release. So what you're actually seeing is the one take face of betrayal. Poor guy. But Alan Rickman wasn't alone with his fear of heights because we all feel it in some ways or another at varying degrees. In actual fact, an instinctual reaction to heights is triggered when your inner ear feels an exaggerated gravitational pull and tells your other senses all about it. It immediately alerts the rest of your body of the distance that exists between you and the ground. And well, if that distance exceeds say 30 feet or so, your body will instinctually go into a panic mode triggered by the fear of falling from such a height. The thing is though, this fear is fascinating because unlike other similar fears, while our body is hardwired to experience a shift in gravitational pull, we don't develop this fear at birth. It isn't ancestrally ingrained in our brains despite having the faculties to do so. In actual fact, this fear is developed after a baby begins to learn locomotive skills and it's been found that people only learn to be scared of heights after they begin to perceive space and movement. So basically, we just got far too used to swimming upside down in our mum's wombs. Oh, why did I just say that? Mum's wombs. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, death. And 
It goes with the territory, really. We're all on a pretty level playing field when it comes to evacuating this mortal coil. And as my buddy Ben Franklin said way back in 1789, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. And while everyone's kind of indifferent about fearing taxes, I hope, death takes the top spot. Humanity instinctively seeks to preserve ourselves, as in we are hardwired to survive. Just take a look at fight or flight and the lengths that people like Aaron Ralston will go to survive. Any threat that humanity perceives is stoked by the eternal furnace of the fear of dying. But there is one modicum of the instinctual fear of death that kind of takes the cake. Existential death anxiety, which while also being an awesome band name, is a fear found exclusively in humans. It is both the blessing and the curse of our existence, the double-edged sword of humanity. The fear of what happens when life ends, and one of the reasons that has driven our species to often do equal parts crazy and equal parts amazing things. Because when our species climb down from the trees and bang their science homework between two rocks to start a fire, we began a chain reaction that inevitably resulted in us asking the scariest question of them all. What happens when the lights go out? Kicking us off at number five, we have The Creepy Artist. A Reddit user who will otherwise remain anonymous details a bizarre encounter that occurred in broad daylight sometime in 2014. It was the height of summer and she was home alone in her apartment enjoying a bright, warm afternoon. Well, that all abruptly ended when she heard her doorbell ring. As she opened it, a young, unassuming man stood in the frame holding a large square bag. Being a Canadian who, as we know, are incredibly polite individuals, she struck up a conversation with the man and discovered that he was an artist. He told her that he was in town to open up a gallery nearby. You see, he wanted to drum up some business and sell some paintings to the locals at a discount rate. Sounds reasonable enough, right? Well, the first few paintings he showed her were nice general landscapes of nature and a few national parks. But that's when the nude portraits began. The first one was conventional enough, a classical Grecian style with bowls of fruit and the human form. But the next one seemed eerily too photorealistic and almost seemed to depict some kind of crime scene. Then it became even more intense and depicted scenes of gore and violence, even human dismemberment. The man, he just stood there, flipping through the canvases and grinning wildly at her. At one point, he even made a step towards her, and that's when she abruptly slammed the door in his face. She was freaked out, to say the least, but after she calmed down, she went to check from her bedroom window where the man had gone. Well, he was still standing there in the exact same spot, flipping through his paintings to a closed door. Next up at number four, we have the porch creature. Now, we all know that things that happen in the wilderness are already 10 times scarier by default. Reddit user I Am The Cage was house sitting for his parents who he described as lived in the actual middle of nowhere. The closest neighbor to his parents' house lived about a mile away and his parents had taken their dogs with them on their vacation. The house was eerie and completely silent, the kind of house that you had to keep the TV on at all times of the day as you'd be faced with nothing but the eerie sound of your own breathing. On one particular night, I am the cage stepped out onto the back porch for a cigarette before bed. Now, don't smoke, kids. As he reached the bottom of the porch steps, he flicked the wheel on his lighter and the small flame briefly illuminated his surroundings. It was then that our narrator realized he wasn't alone. A massive, brown-haired, four-legged beast was eating from one of the dog bowls outside the house. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's a bear. But I'm the Cage described it as being something that he'd never before seen in the wild. And it was covered in a strange, brown, human-like hair from front to back. Whatever it was, our narrator didn't have the time to find out, as like anyone would do, he quickly retreated into his cabin and hid himself under the covers for the night. Next up at number three, we've got the basement cackle. One day, a Reddit user named Corby315 was in the basement, unassumingly doing their laundry. All of a sudden, the lights blew out. No big deal, right? Wrong. When you're in a basement in the dark, the demonic forces of evil and shadow are instantly alerted to your location, as we all know. In Corby's basement, it was partitioned into two sections, with the furthest away section being where the washer and dryer were kept. So, in order to get back upstairs, you had to exit the laundry room and go through the other parts of the basement, which was now in absolute pitch black darkness. It was so dark to say the least, but after finishing the laundry and eventually mustering up enough courage to brave the basement, Corby315 made their way through the darkness. 
As they got to the halfway point, all seemed fine until Corby315 heard a noise from behind them that was clearer than day. A loud, continuous cackle, a shriek that could only resemble that of a witch's. Corby315 described the cackle as deep and hoarse, as if whoever had made it had been smoking for nearly 50 years. Whatever it was, they didn't stick around long enough to find out, wisely so. Coming in at number two, we've got the Bonneville Trail. Years ago, Reddit user Seven Spaces, who lived in Utah, was a keen hiker and camper, and they headed out one weekend to the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. On this particular occasion, though, he decided to take a trail that he'd never walked before. Good idea, it rarely is. After hiking a few miles up the trail, he came across a bend where two trees had apparently been uprooted. Seemingly though, they'd been placed over the trail in a way that resembled an archway. This is where things get weirder, because at the end of each tree were two big elk skulls purposefully put into place. Seven Spaces describes the skulls as being placed to look directly at you. He shrugged it off though and kept going on his way. As soon as he passed through the threshold of the archway though, he felt a cold chill shoot up his spine and the hairs on the ends of his knuckles stand on end. He didn't want to turn back but the whole time he couldn't shake the sensation that he was somehow being watched. As he makes his way through, maybe five minutes later, all of a sudden the birds stop chirping and all the little animals of the forest stop moving and even the wind seemed to die down. It was total silence. And as he'd been taught by his father, he knew that sudden quiet in the wilderness generally equaled bad news. Seven spaces broke out into a full-blown sprint and hauled his ass off the trail. He didn't see anything, but he knew at that very moment that something or someone was stalking him. He could feel their eyes burning into him as he ran back down the trail. He doesn't know exactly what it was, but he intends to never find out. And finally, at our number one spot, we have the abandoned train tunnel. In this story, which happened around 2012, Reddit user Doodling Daughter details the strange events that happened in a set of old train tunnels in Colorado. The abandoned train tunnels, which are just west of Manitou Springs on Highway 24, if you wanted to check them out yourself, which, well, I wouldn't really recommend, please don't do that. There are a reported seven separate caves in the train tunnel system, but as Doodling Daughter entered this particular tunnel, she was overwhelmed with a horrible feeling that she was being watched. She kept hearing strange echoes and noises, but nervously, she laughed it off. She made her way deeper into the tunnel system and the flashlight, which she had, well, yeah, it started to die because that's what always happens in these situations. Right before her flashlight fully went out, she saw a white, faceless figure up ahead. It was a creepy, man-sized, mannequin-esque doll. As she inspected it, she had found that it had been stabbed with a blade where its face and groin would have been, and inside the wounds were a strange white substance. But as she went to take a closer look, she heard footsteps shuffling behind her. Needless to say, she ran as fast as she could out of there and never went back. To this day, she has no idea exactly what went down. But after submitting her post, another Reddit user claimed that they'd been to the same tunnels and they'd found piles of bones that are supposedly related to a group of Satan worshippers that inhabit the tunnels. Well, what do you guys think? Would you want to head down into the Colorado tunnels on your own? Well, I'm fine right here at top five scary video. Wait, what was that?